Good morning everybody, my name is Maya the King and today we're taking a quick look at Aircraft Carrier Survival which released very early this morning. And as I mentioned in my last video, a lot of you people out there don't stick around long for my videos. I don't know why, but I'm assuming it's because I'm not very good. Well regardless, I'm still going to keep churning these things out in the hopes that I'll eventually either find my quirk or maybe just bludgeon my way into your hearts. The point of my videos are to inform and assist purchases, not necessarily to entertain. I apologize for the fact that I'm not very entertaining. Also, did you notice that I sound better? I think I finally managed to get my mic to work the right way. Here's hoping. Now, onto this game. I've been looking forward to this game for a while. I've actually had it on my Steam wishlist for a long time. I'm, I'm really interested in games like this. If you've been watching any of my other videos, then you should know that these kinds of games are my thing. The game is selling for $20 on Steam, and no, it is not in early access. Developed by Gambit Games Studio and published by Creative Forge Games. So basically, this game is you as a captain or an admiral, I'm not sure which, on an aircraft carrier during World War II. That's the whole thing of this game. You have missions, and the game really takes you into the intricate details of controlling a carrier in a time of great war. The Steam store page looks pretty cool with all the stuff the game is offering, so I was more than excited to jump in and find out if it was worth my time and money, as I'm sure all of you out there are waiting for as well. Why am I talking so fast? Well, because as I said, most people don't stick around for longer than a few minutes, and I ain't got time to screw around. So the game is really what you would expect, though I think a problem here is just how intricate it is. There's a lot of micromanaging here, and a lot of waiting around. There are so many functions, so many different faucets you have to pay attention to in order to do things the right way, or just to survive a mission. The tutorial was barely any help. I mean, sure, it taught me some stuff, but I'd say the tutorial only offers you about half of what you need to know to play the game, and the rest you need to figure out for yourself. Now while that was frustrating, I was also kind of able to bludge my way through and figure some things out. Uh, t overall, to put it simply, the game's graphics are average, the sound effects are average, as is the voice acting. The gameplay was fun and engaging, even if a bit confusing. The price tag feels appropriate to me when you consider all the things at play here, the tutorial was lackluster, and the gameplay is a bit confusing and glitchy. And honestly, I don't really see myself playing this for long periods of time, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to return to it. Half the time I find myself almost floundering and just forcing my way through certain scenarios all while not really knowing what I'm doing. That, plus the intricate way I have to pay attention to every little thing, all while everything moves at a slow pace, and the fact that you're pretty much just staring at a bland carrier where nothing happens most of the time, it's all just a bit of a letdown. I was more or less invested in the game, you know, even though I was having a hard time figuring out how everything worked, but I was still a little bit invested, and overall that was pretty much my experience. I was invested, but I was also kind of bored at how slow and bland everything was. Alright, so now we're going to go in a little bit more deeper, you know, you want to know more? Alright, here we go. So let's get started on what you can do. Well, first up, whenever you are docked at Pearl Harbor, you can customize your carrier and the ships designated to escort duty. You can pick them out based on the bonuses they give and help come up with a nice little fleet of your own to manage. And you can see your current mission beforehand so that you can pick the appropriate ships you think you might need. You can also pick your crew and they get different bonuses and what you think you might see as being useful for that mission. Another thing you can do is you can customize your own character, the admiral that you're going to be playing as. You can customize him or her. Not necessary, but I appreciate this aspect of the game. I said him or her, but I don't know if you can be female. I, I didn't look. That's my bad. But it, considering it's World War II and it's trying to be realistic, I doubt it. Sorry, ladies. So, not necessarily, you know, the, the whole customizing your admiral thing, not exactly necessary, but it was very much appreciated. While you are on your mission, whatever it may happen to be, you will have a clear objective that you must complete. The first mission for me was destroying an enemy aircraft carrier while trying to rescue a Washington representative on some island somewhere. I had to locate the enemy fleet, destroy it, and then rescue the guy. While I was doing this, I got to see a bunch of cool stuff and a bunch of bland boring stuff. For instance, you are dishing out orders and your carrier on your carrier and you can see the people moving around and, you know, doing what you told them to do. Now that was cool. You can click on a section of your ship and when you do, you get to see inside of it and all the machines and people working as if it's all real, which was also really cool. You can also control how fast your ship goes, what planes you need on the deck, you can pick where your crew works on the carrier to make sure certain sections are more useful during combat or other scenarios or situations. Uh, you can send your planes off to bomb other ships or to provide air cover, and which protects your own ships. And you can even take out like scouts and stuff too that are trying to find you. And to do this you have like a card system where you have these cards that you can play out and they give bonuses to your planes that are heading. I don't know, it was really weird and it didn't make a lot of sense, but I think they're like strategies or something that your pilots take. I don't know. But you can see on your radar when you're being attacked, and then once the enemy ship shows up, or the enemy planes show up, sorry, you'll have a little bit of a combat animation surrounding the outside of your carrier that you can kind of look at. You can't really look very closer, which was disappointing. But hey, at least there was some form of acknowledgement that you were engaged in battle. 
And even though the carrier never gets hit on the outside during these animations, apparently it still suffered da damage somehow. I, I don't know if that's a mistake or a glitch or if it was programmed that way, but I mean, come on. If you're gonna if you're gonna have this little combat animation and then you're gonna have damage to the carrier and you have to repair it, fix it, or whatever, then at least have the animation hit the carrier so it looks like you're actually taking damage, which it doesn't do. And when your own planes head off to attack enemy ships, this is the cool thing. You, There are a bunch of unique, different cutscenes of your planes going into combat with different outcomes and scenarios. That was so cool. I was really hoping they would have something like that, and I was hoping they would have more of something like that. Honestly, the coolest thing in this game is when you send your planes off to attack enemies and you get your little animation. That's, that's cool. It's the coolest part of the game. But, unfortunately, you don't really get to see any dogfights in the sky. So if you send your planes out into the air to defend yourself from an enemy squadron, they just blip out of existence with a small message saying, You win! The game has a lot of intricacies where I don't want them, instead of where I do want them. I care more about watching a dogfight in the air than I care about all the miscellaneous crap below deck that I can't even interact with. Why not just make it a bit more simple and give me more cool war cutscenes based on my actions? I feel like that would have been a better source of entertainment and it should have deserved more attention. And then the main reason why I quit the game and came to write this script, even though I hadn't finished my mission yet. The bugs and the glitches. While the game never crashed or froze on me, it did have other issues. Massive frame rate drops, lag, and horrible game breaking glitches. I couldn't even fully complete my tutorial because my officers on the island section of the ship refused to move, be clicked on, or follow orders. They were just stuck there, even though I was doing exactly what the tutorial was telling me to do. Then, when I was on my first mission, all my planes on my deck glitched out, for no reason at all. They weren't loading up the planes, they weren't getting rid of the planes, they weren't sending them on any missions, they weren't doing anything I was telling them to do. I was stuck, unable to do anything or progress, but the enemy was still able to do stuff. So the game is filled with glitches that may just destroy whatever it is you're currently in the process of doing, and since I'm not sure how the save system works, I probably have to restart that whole mission over again because of this glitch. Overall, I think that if you were looking for an in-depth, realistic way to play as an aircraft carrier, captain, or admiral during World War II, this game is a pretty good fit for that. It does almost everything right, despite my complaints. It is lacking in a few areas, but it's also excelling in other areas. It's a big old toss-up. Sometimes you'll flip the coin and you'll get a positive, sometimes you'll flip the coin and you'll get a negative. The game is overall a bit slow and a bit overly complicated, I think. However, when something does go right, or when something does happen, at least you're going to get some cool animations, cool cutscenes, and some, some cool interactions with the game and with the war and the battle that you're partaking in. It almost makes the waiting around doing nothing worth it. I wish there were more in terms of ship-to-ship -ship combat or dogfighting in the sky, and less micromanaging useless soldiers on your lower deck who do nothing but pre-scripted animations. I also wish things moved a little bit faster, but at least they give you a fast-forward button to try and mitigate the slowness. And honestly, if the game was just a bit faster, a bit less needlessly complicated, it would have been an amazing game overall. If you feel like what you've seen and heard in this video has done enough to perk your curiosity, then I encourage you to check this game out. But if it sounds like a bit too much of a gamble, then I'd also recommend waiting. They definitely need to get some of those bugs and glitches fixed before they even consider returning to this game. I've now had one mission and one tutorial ruined by these glitches. And I'd like for them to add some more animations, some dogfights, some ship-to-ship -ship combat stuff. I mean, just give me a little bit more than the exact same boring thing over and over again. But overall, I think this game is perfectly average with the potential to be something better in time. Is it worth it right now? No. Not until those glitches and bugs are ironed out. But once they are, I think this game might be worth 20 bucks. I think it would be worth checking out. But that's just my personal opinion. So that's all I have to say about this game. If you have any questions or concerns about the game, then please let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them honestly and quickly. Thanks so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.